guess what? Before we started the show, one of the ladies in the studio audience <laughs> said she had to go and have a pee. So I said, well, on you go. I'm not a kidnapper. On you go and have a pee. But I had this idea, like, while she's at the bathroom, we could all hide. <laughs> and then... <laughs> When she comes back, it'll just be like, we'll get Andy Rooney to come in or something. It'll just be Andy Rooney. And like, she'll think she's gone through some kind of time war. <laughs> Not that I'm in any way suggesting that Andy Rooney is outdated in any way, of course. <laughs> oh, come on. I love Andy Rooney with his rage about ridiculous things. <laughs> Hi, why are forks so pointy? <laughs> are really pointy. When I was young, I used to listen to Frank Sinatra albums. And forks were blunt. You could put a fork into a melon and it wouldn't work. Is that anything like Andy Rooney? Not really. It's a bit like P.B. Herman, though. Anyway, the thing is, is she still at the bathroom? Is she? Oh, she... I hope it was number ones. We shouldn't, we shouldn't show her on the show, though. We shouldn't show you her coming back in from the bathroom. We shouldn't. <laughs> All right, here's what we'll do. Here, here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do, right? When, when she comes back, right? Just, what? She, all right, okay. Here's an update. Nothing happened. It's like during the election, or like, today, there still wasn't the election. Yes, we know. <laughs> but when she does come back, what I think we should probably do is we'll just take a, a little shot of her, and she won't know. <laughs> and so, oh, hi, come on back. No, come on back. It's all right. Come on back. Hi. It's all right. All right, well done. We, did, we didn't say anything about what was going on. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll be right back with the show, everybody. That's enough. Whatever hand movements I have to make to shut you up, I'll do them. Galloping pony, sexy butterfly. It's a great day for America, everybody. Now, I say this every night, but of course, today is Veterans Day. So uh, I thank you to all our veterans for your service to this country. I salute your courage, your sacrifice, and your patriotism. Thank you, veterans. Right. Um, we'll be right back. <laughs> no, listen, uh, Sarah Palin did another interview today. She, she, uh, it was the Today Show, wasn't it, Today? That's a great name for a show, isn't it? It's on Today, and they call it Today. <laughs> and so she's been on now NBC, Fox News, the local news, the magazines. She's talking so much they can hear her from Russia. <laughs> That was Russian. What do you think? It was good, wasn't it? <laughs> so I'm sorry, Russian-Americans. Um, <laughs> Business Week magazine has listed the top ten cities in which to raise children. In other news, Michael Jackson just announced a ten-city concert tour. The economic news is awful. It's gone from bad to worse. The stock market went down 176 points today. I'm sorry to turn into a Muppet, but 176 points. I mean, come on! 
Alan! <laughs> the studies that bankruptcies are going on all over the place, that some brand name stores are going bankrupt. The sharper image went bankrupt. I know! <laughs> thought that a place that sells useless garbage would go out of business. <laughs> oh, come on, Sharper Image was just gifts for, it was gifts and toys for rich jerks. <laughs> oh, my wine gauge. Yeah, I got it at Sharper Image. It gauges my wine. <laughs> so I know the correct level of jerkiness, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Sharper Image was the place in the mall where men go while women do the real shopping. That's all it was really for. Guys would go there, put their hand or your face or other parts of you into that pin thingy. So you go, or test the massage chair. And then say, no, I don't want to buy a massage chair. Because you don't want a massage chair because they're crap. It doesn't feel like a massage. It feels like a kid sitting behind you in an airplane. Well, I don't know. Some people should look after their children. <laughs> Nobody ever bought anything at Sharper Image. Obviously, they're bankrupt. Actually, that's not true. I, uh, I bought a personal massager there once. <laughs> Raul, his name is. He's firm, but... <laughs> got very gentle hands. I also got one of those little toys where the balls bang together. You know, the click-clack? You know that thing with the six balls inside a cage smashing into each other? Sounds like a party at Elton John's house. It's the... <laughs> I've made myself laugh. That's good. Do you know who else went bankrupt? Linens and things. I've gone bankrupt. I know. I think I saw that coming, though, because they didn't really care. Besides linens, they didn't care what they sold. They were like, yeah, we sell linens and things. <laughs> you know, linens. I don't know. Linens and stuff. What? Even Starbucks is in trouble. Starbucks. Yesterday they reported their quarterly profit is down 97%. That's a lot. <laughs> now, listen, I, I've got some advice for Starbucks. I can turn their business around in two easy steps. Now, you listen to me, Howard Schultz. He's the CEO of Starbucks. He never listens to me. I told, I, when I complained about them closing the bathroom at the Starbucks in Melrose, he, like, didn't care. <laughs> anyway, here's my advice to Starbucks. One, stop selling CDs. If I wanted a CD, I would go back in time to when CDs were not obsolete. I want a coffee. I do not want smooth jazz, and I don't want a book about feelings. I want coffee. Number two. Number two, bring back the zucchini walnut muffin. What the hell is wrong with you? is fantastic. The zucchini walnut muffin, it's nature's perfect food. It is delicious. It is profitable in many ways. Why would you get rid of the zucchini walnut muffin? That would like be like NBC getting rid of their best late night guy. Why would you do it? Why? What the hell is wrong with you? Hey, Kevin, I, I think I could get a job in Starbucks. Why did he do an impersonation of Mickey Mouse? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yesterday, uh, uh, Circuit City, Circuit City filed for Chapter 11. <laughs> you know, this means flat screen TVs for everybody. I, I have never understood why it's called Chapter 11. Is there a book? Is that what it is? Chapter one, we've got a lot of money. Uh, chapter two, we don't have as much money as we used to. <laughs> chapter ten, oh, I'm kind of short on cash, dude. Um, can you show me where the sperm bank is? And then chapter eleven, bankruptcy. I think, no, I think about bankruptcy, I think it's kind of cheating. It's kind of a, a get-out-of-jail-free card. Here's what I think. If you're going to go bankrupt, what you do is you write down the names of everyone you owe money to, you put the names on little pieces of paper, put them in a hat, then you take the hat out and set fire to it. <laughs> I tell you a story about, uh, I tell you a story about this. When I, was, when I stopped drinking, uh, I, 
I was I, I owed a bit of money to some people and, and I considered filing for bankruptcy. Then I decided no, I was gonna pay off all my debt. So I paid off everybody. Everybody. And one of the people I had to pay off was in a bar in London. He was a guy who used to sell me um, medicinal goods. Uh, <laughs> recreational pick-me-ups, if you like. Uh, cocaine. Anyway. So at this point, when I had to go to pay him back, by this point, I'd been sober eight years. Now, obviously, I didn't rush into paying everyone back. Now, I, I went up and I, I, said, I said to him, I said, I don't know if you remember me. I owe you money for some stuff you sold me a long time ago. I gave him 120 bucks. And he said, no one's ever done that before. <laughs> said, I, I've ruined a lot of lives, but little moments like this make me be a drug dealer all the way. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You're crying. He said, no, I just don't have any cartilage in my nose. <laughs> I said, do you want a gram of coke? I went, no, that's why I'm paying you back. He said, I, I can give you on credit. <laughs> that's a touching story, isn't it? <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back with the show. If your life leads you with questions, seek advice from under the sea. Dear Aquaman, dear Aquaman, please give your advice to me, Aquaman. It is I, Aquaman, the nautical captain to your ship of insecurity. Man, they get younger and hotter every day, don't they? <laughs> this letter reads, Dear Aquaman, in a fight, who would win, Batman or Superman? The answer is easy, me! <laughs> I could beat Batman and Superman if the fight was underwater. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, anybody need to go to the bathroom? I do. Oh, no, everything's fine now. Right, but, uh, anyway, I can't be mucking around talking about the bathroom. <laughs> Actually, I can. I kind of do it every night. It's called potty humour. Do we have time for an email tonight, do we? Yes, oh. it's email time. Yeah. Supermodel London, Paris, Tokyo time. And a little wild minds of email tonight. Yeah, 80s. It's the same old time. But do 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 this is from Scott in mm, Scotland, not really Ville. <laughs> Jerk. Uh, Scott says, what do you think the shape of the universe is? Oh, I don't know, Scott. Why don't you smoke another joint and tell me? <laughs> I've just a great idea for a question. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I think one thing worse than that is when people who are high write poetry. Oh, my God. All right, this is from uh, Luciano in uh, Porto Alegre in Brazil. Can we go out in Brazil? Woo, I'm getting waxed. Uh, I'm kidding, I've already been waxed. Uh, uh, hey there, uh, Craig. What's the very best thing you've ever gotten in Ho Hollywood Boulevard? Um... I, I had a Brazilian, actually. <laughs> Raul, his name was. Uh, uh, a waxing. I had a Brazilian waxing where I was waxed to make it look like I enjoyed coffee more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> the only person that knew what I was talking about there was Scott the High Guy, really. Um, 
All right, this is from Jasmine in Slovenia. Do we have any emails from America? What the hell? Um, not, that, not that there's anything wrong with getting an email from Slovenia. That's awesome. Do we go out to Slovenia? It's the YouTubes, isn't it? Ah, the YouTubes. Uh, we do very well on the YouTube. Sometimes we get upwards of 15 or 20 hits. Um, <laughs> That's what they call them, hits on the YouTube. We get 15 or 20 hits on the YouTube, whereas, you know, a pigeon uh, finding a piece of gum on the sidewalk gets like three million hits. <laughs> and people are like commenting, oh, this pigeon's hilarious! <clears throat> anyway, Jasmine in Slovenia says, Hi, Craig, I'm going through a very difficult period. Could you give me a hug and tell me everything's going to be okay? Aww. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Stay there. Stay there, Chad. Uh, come here. Come here. It's got to be all right. It's got to be all right. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right, Jasmine. Right, no, I, I can't right now. You're vulnerable. <laughs> oh, all right, then. I'm kidding. All right, I hope that helps, Jasmine. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know what you're thinking. Craig, there are other cameras you could have hugged. Why did you walk all the way to that camera? I'll tell you why. It's the only one that's clean. <laughs> you heard me other dirty cameras. Um, this is from Zia in Anaheim in California. Don't we have any emails from America? <laughs> Sia says, Dear Craig, I'm looking for a middle name that begins with a Y. Can you give me a couple of suggestions for cool and sexy names that begin with the letter Y? Why? Uh, why? No, I mean, why would you want a, a middle... I mean, don't you already have a middle... Oh, because her name's Xia. It starts with an X. So she wants a middle name that begins with a Y. Um, Yo-Yo? <laughs> Yolanda, Yvonne, Yvonne. You know, there used to be a waitress in a cafe that I went to back in the old country, and her name was Yvonne, and sometimes I would say, Yvonne, no clothes. <laughs> and we'd laugh, and then she'd pour scalding hot coffee on my lap. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. We'll be right back with Coolio, everybody. comfortable tonight. I'm all fussy. <laughs> I know what I need. Discipline. <laughs> My first guest tonight is the star of Coolio's Rules. It's on Tuesday nights on Oxygen. Uh, take a look at this. Coolio rule number 42. If you don't clean up before you go to bed, you're going to end up cleaning your bed. All right. I got something for your ass. Man! They ass out. Don't know why you deserve to live in my house. Yeah, that looks nice. <laughs> Please welcome Coolio, everybody. Go. Hello, my friend. How, How you are doing, you? bro? Oh, you know, I'm okay. I'm First okay. First of all, hold on. Put what? this on. Oh, yeah. You got me a hat? Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. Mm. Now, hold on. I got a couple of bones to pick with you. Yo, really? You're threatening me with a plastic knife? Yeah. You've mellowed somewhat. That's a shank. You know, oh, a shank. All right, then. So, um, you know, I did a performance here. and uh, Yeah, it was great. I, I, nah, I didn't see it there. Oh, we did, it's not aired yet? No. No. We recorded a song of yours and we've not played it on the air? No. And well, the other we, thing is, wait, wait. What, what? You got a wall of fame back there. Oh, uh, yeah? And, uh, yeah, and you're not on? I'm not on it. 
I got, you know, I, I, got don't, a problem with I am furious about this. <laughs> Um, you know, well, we'll play the song tonight. On, How's about that? We'll oh. play the song tonight. Hold on. What? <laughs> oh, uh, you know, I, but come on, man. You hurt my feelings. No, come on. Okay, come on. Let's hug it out. Come oh. on. All right. It's all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. We'll play the song tonight. We'll play the song tonight. <laughs> Well, uh, it's a great song. I remember no, no, when we recorded. Really, it was fantastic. Really. I can't wait to see it again. Saka Zulu. It's Saka Zulu. That's the one. So now let's talk about Coolio's rules. Yeah. Okay. Then let's go. Then talk about it. who lives in your house. Who who are the people? I have take... four children. This, this was right. your kids. Yeah. <laughs> you can't pour spaghetti and stuff on your kids. What age are they? Well, they uh, the eighteen. Well, at that time they were eighteen, nineteen, and uh, twenty. Oh, you can pour it in your leg. Fifteen. Then. Yeah, yeah. 15, 18, 19, and 20. Well, that's, I mean, they should be really, 18, 19, and 20, shouldn't they be out kind of Well, working? yeah, I actually should put them out. Yeah. yeah. I've been thinking about that, but, you know, we're in a recession right now. So. All right, fair enough. Are you very... I don't want to go visit them at the Mission downtown. No. <laughs> now, that would make you feel guilty, yeah, I suppose, yeah. 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 Why, why, why were you messing up the house and throwing the garbage around? Well, you know, that's, that's the way I discipline them. I, you know. You mess up your own house? I stopped beating them. I stopped beating them you know, a couple of years ago. Right. But I'm, I'm a little concerned that you're throwing trash over your own house. It's you, still oh, well, they, no, they, they cleaned it up. Oh, they cleaned it up? Oh, yeah. oh, well, Just made them have more to clean up. And then that way, next time, they'll clean up before they go to bed. Yeah. My mother used to put the dishes in my bed and make my bed. The dishes in get, your bed and then Look, and I get bed. in bed and stick my feet in some spaghetti water. <laughs> Do you know what that feel like? What? Spaghetti water. Spaghetti water on like, your feet? Yeah. I, I, in the you know, of, I, night. of all the things like, I've done, like, I've never done no, that, be like, actually. <laughs> no, be like, cling a ling, 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 ling. ling. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that a little bit insane? <laughs> uh, well, you know, somewhat. Right, okay. Well, I, got, I, got, I got beatings, though, you know. I got what, when you were from, oh. that, how you were disciplined? You Hell were, to the year. Hell to the yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. My mother, I, I remember one time I had a blind uncle that stayed with us. Right. Um, he got shot. Right, okay. And he got blinded. Oh, he got blinded by the shooting. Yeah. Well, this is hilarious. Yeah. So let me yeah. tell you. So he had a he had a tape recorder. It was the first tape recorder I saw. Right. With a rechargeable battery. Did and he it had Braille on the little buttons and everything? Right. It was a cassette. Cassette oh, recorder, yeah. yeah. So I had a 10 speed, you know, with a bike rack on it. Right. And I get some, you know, those little stretch things that's put on the bike. Yeah, I, these little bendy yeah, bungee, yeah, cords, yeah. bungee cords. Bungee cords. Yeah, 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 bungee cords. I, yeah. You know, put it on the back of my bike and roll, you know. Right. <laughs> you, know, you know, I had sounds on my bike. Well, that's good. You know, that was cool. Yeah. And then, you know, batteries were expensive then as they still are expensive now. Uh, batteries? Batteries. What kind of batteries are we talking D about? D batteries. D batteries? Yeah. They're expensive. No, we used to have those big Come radios. Come on. Come on. You see. You're wearing you, the Ed Hardy clothing you, and you're no, the big I'm time talking, rap star. You can afford no, a damn battery. I'm talking about back in the day. Oh, back in the day. Back in the day when I was stealing corn chips from the corner store. Right. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, and somehow the cord got cut. And I had been told several times, several times, not to touch that tape recorder. Right. So this particular morning, I think I was about 14 or 15. Mm hmm I woke up with a extension cord wrapped around my whole rib cage. <laughs> I've had that happen. No, I'm no, like, no. Ah, really? I, I, I damn near hit the. Hey man, I damn near hit the ceiling. Really? And uh, and I had on some dun da da duns. You know what those are? Uh, dun da da duns. <laughs> Oh, like those, I hardly like those, dare us. They're like the little Aquaman draws you had on. <laughs> yeah. I had on Are some you wearing Dunder Duns and, now? And no. no okay. I, don't, I don't do that anymore. Anyway, so I snatched the extension. This is my last whooping, too. Yeah. I snatched the extension cord over here, and I ran outside about 8.30 in the morning with Dunder Duns. Dun -dun. no Why are they called no Dunder Duns? That's what we call them in the hood. Dunder Duns. Dun -dun 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 <laughs> That's how you look, you know, kind of. Aquaman is shit. Right, I, mean, I, get I like the Aquaman bit. <clears throat> you like the Aquaman? Yeah. I had to work out a lot for that, you know. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I saw your chest. I've your let pets. myself go, yeah. Your you, chest plates. Do, do, do you work out a lot? Do you do a lot of the. Uh... Uh, not as much as I used to. I mean, yeah. you know, I still try to. You know, I still try to stay fit, you know. I'm not. Definitely not out of shape. Are you still doing the cooking? You, 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 you're Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we're getting ready to shoot the uh, next season of the cooking show probably in December. Oh, yeah? Yeah, in the cookbook. You, you know what you should do? Christmas recipes. Uh. 
You know, oh, I, really, got, you I, don't know, really, sure. I don't do Christmas and Thanksgiving that much. Man. What the? What you, yeah. Mr. Scrooge? Why? Why, Mr. Scrooge? Well, I don't want my kids to get any more than they already getting. <laughs> You know, I'm trying to... It's yes. just been great seeing you again. And, we, you know, we should uh, play this song. Yes, yes. The new uh, album is called Still Here. Still Here. Still Here. And, and, and it's going to be everybody. That's Steel. very important. And you're getting it in Starbucks. Right, Good on. night, everybody. Stop. Still. Still Here. My, my next guest co-wrote a book. Yes! People are still reading them. You can, you can get them at Starbucks. <laughs> the book is called uh, Tim and Tom, an American comedy in black and white. Please welcome Tom Driesen and Tim Reed, everybody. Tom Driesen and Tim Reed. Welcome, Tim. Thank it's good you. to see you. Good Thank to you. see good you, to Tim. See you. Now, you were... First of all, let me just say happy Veterans Day. You're a veteran, aren't you? Yes, sir. Thank oh, you well, very Thank much. you for... Yeah, happy Veterans Day. Is it happy? I don't think it's happy Veterans Day. It's just Veterans Day. You yeah. say thank you on Veterans Day. So thank you, Tom. Yeah, thank you. Now, you guys were the first... The first black and white comedy team in America, right? And the last. Yeah, I was just going to say, where's the next well, one? Well, until, until Obama McCain finished yeah, their they, comedy. They, 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 <laughs> I don't... I don't know how much of a team they were. Was it, was it, a very, was it very controversial at the time when you guys were on? Yeah, I mean, we were, we, were, we were not only America's first black and white comedy team, like I said, but we were the last. We were the first to do it live anywhere in America. So we worked all white clubs in the North and the South, and we worked all black clubs in the North and the South. So and no one had ever seen a white guy and a black guy on stage having a discourse like, like we were having. At what the time. kind of discourse did you have? Was it... Was, well, was it, was it the, you know, we talked about what was going on. This is, remember, this is like 1969. You know, we right. just had the Democratic Convention in Chicago and we lost two great leaders, anti-war Vietnam demonstrations, uh, race riots. So we'd go out and make it's a good time for a good time for comedy. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we're a bit, this, a bit insane. This book here, this cover here, this is the cover. This is us on stage. We used to do a routine where I was interviewing the first black president of the United States. This was 40 years ago. Wow. 40 years ago. And people would say to us, one critic once said to us, uh, the material is a little bit unrealistic, like they're interviewing a black president of the United States. I wonder where he's at now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it did come as something of a shock to a lot of people, though, I yes. think, yeah. yeah. Now, did you, uh, did you meet any prejudice on the road because you were working together? I mean, when you were moving, because you said you played in the South, you played in the North, you, the, the white clubs, the black oh, yeah. clubs. Uh, we played, you know, there were no comedy clubs back then, so you right. had to work wherever you could get. But the, I think the fourth time we were on stage, a guy put a cigarette out of my face. And uh, a fight wow. broke out. We that's got into a this very extreme heckle, that's, that's isn't a, it? That's too much yeah. heckling. Well, comedy was a blood sport then. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then he, he tried to beat me half to death, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, who did he hate? He hated the black well, hated guy and me. the white guy. Yeah. That the, the interesting the thing point. about racism in those days is probably that exists today. Although the, America is not a racist country, and this last election proved that. There are racist incidents, but it's not a racist country. Right. Those incidents in those days, if there was a black guy who didn't like white folks, and we were working a black club, he didn't like white people with a passion, he wasn't mad at me. He was mad at Tim for being with me. Oh. If there was a white guy who hated black people, he wasn't mad at Tim. He's mad at me for being with Tim, you know. So after I that... I can't keep up with that. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> after that brawl that night, we got in the car, and it was the fourth time we were ever on stage. If we were ever going to quit, we should have quit that day. But we get in the car, Tim's all scarred up, I'm all beat up, I can hardly breathe. We get in the car to go home, and Tim looked at me, and he said, welcome to show business. <laughs> Now, how long, how long, I mean, you guys don't do the double act anymore, do you? Yeah. No, no. How long were you, were you on the road then? How long? Six years. About six, six years. years? We toured together. From 1969 to 1975. So, and is it kind of like a friendly divorce? Uh, you, uh, a well, friendly well, divorce. <laughs> 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 friendly divorce. Wait, wait. <laughs> Let me ask my friend plaintiff. Uh, <laughs> No, you never, you never sued each other or anything like that? Oh, good. no, You're still no. Friends? I, mean, I was his biggest fan. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you read the book, there's a, we have a different opinion as to why. Please read the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> we have a different opinion of why the act broke up, but to me, it was like a broken marriage. It broke my heart, because I thought we were going to become the greatest comedy team this nation had ever known. I really believed that, you know, at the time. Right. Uh, well, uh, you still might. You know, you're, you're, you've got your, your rest of I don't want to split the check. I, we don't want to split the check. No, it's, it's... <laughs> Did you ever run into any censorship problems? Did anyone try and stop you? Uh, you know, doing any particular material because it was race-based material. No, you got to realize back then comedy was, was certainly different. We didn't have all the pundits. You know, you really lived and died by your own word. And back then you could do racial comedy. Today you couldn't do it. I mean, the pundits would drive us crazy. Somebody would YouTube us and we'd be out of business. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, because it would be out of context. So uh, it, was, it was a little easier back then if you had the guts to go there. There weren't but a couple people doing racial comedy. Uh, Dick Gregory, uh, Godfrey Cambridge before he passed, and Tom and I. They weren't, everybody, Bill Cosby and Richard Pryor were doing mainstream humor. Right. Uh, they weren't really doing racial humor. And by the way, the, not every routine Tim and I did were about race. We did routines were uh, uh, going to get a hamburger or something. But the thing was, we were having a discourse. In those days, as in now, black and white folks won't have the discourse with one another. Tim and I were the discourse they wouldn't have. Right. So we were on stage having fun. A black guy and a white guy on stage having a lot of fun. Even if we weren't talking about race, it was racial. You know, right, of course, just by the very fact yeah. that you were well, doing it. Yeah. Black guys and white guys didn't ride around the car in those days or go have dinner together in those days, let alone appear on stage. It happens all the time. Now, West Hollywood, you see black guys and white guys together yeah. all the time. <laughs> all the time. But it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> It's a beautiful. Now, was it a bit like that with you guys? Oh, you, you, here, tell your story. You know, you know we, we, because we were, we weren't getting any money. We'd split sometimes a hundred dollars, and we'd drive six hundred miles to get there. We were coming back from a gig late one morning, about two or three in the morning. We had to stop because we were tired driving. We checked into a motel, and because we were splitting the the money, we couldn't afford two rooms, so we all we hello, bumped together. Hello, here so, we go. Hello. Okay, so let me just get it. <laughs> Keep going, I'll yeah. do the saxophone so, music. So we'd walk in and say, we'd like to have a room, one please. And they'd go, oh, you want a king or queen? <laughs> <laughs> and we said, give us a room. We didn't mind if they thought we were gay, just want to know we were mean. mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You remember? In those days, I had a wife and three kids. He had a wife and two kids, and we were making the most money we ever made at one time was Playboy clubs. We were we yeah. got seven hundred dollars a week, which is three hundred and fifty to split. Plus, we had to pay for our own transportation, everything. You know, and yeah. to you, support. You played the, the Playboy clubs. All of them. Years. Yeah, yeah was that, was, how was that fun? I kind of I we had a I'm lot nostalgic of about that, and I was never there. We had a lot of fun. Even, it, we had a lot of fun. Even working at the clubs were pretty good too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Tim was one to coin a phrase. I've never met a bunny I didn't like. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> Well, listen, it, it, the book seems fascinating, and you're to be celebrated for your, your groundbreaking work. Thank you very much for Thank coming you. on the show. Tom Driesen and Tim Reed, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When, when Coolio was here earlier and he was talking about that time that he was here a long time ago and we recorded a song that, that he'd performed and then we never played it on the air. How <laughs> we laughed. <laughs> but you know, when I think about it now, it was a great night back then. The Coolio was getting ready to do his song and, oh gosh, I wish you could have been there. Friend. With benefits, that I mean new girl. girl You buying it, new fits, new kicks 
girl, you the ch- I'm your pimp. Fit right together like chips and dip. Hey, now if you're my girl, we can sell the sea, fly around the world. Show you new things you ain't saw before. I rock your world, come join me, girl. Somewhere posted, floating on the ocean. Big y'all cruising, glasses toasting. She love my smoke, love my motion. Love my passion, love my emotion. If I was your boyfriend, if I was your boyfriend, if I was your Welcome, stoners. Um, <laughs> dude, it's the only reason I watch this show. <laughs> is to see what that little cat's going to do at the end. <laughs> he took off tonight. <laughs> Into space. <laughs> what did we learn on the show tonight? Well, we learned... Oh, I think we learned that I showed remarkable restraint in not making fun of the lady that had to go to the bathroom right at the beginning <laughs> I, at no point, I did not make fun of her. Do you know what I never understood? When people, you know, get embarrassed about going to the bathroom, who, like, who doesn't go to the bathroom? Uh, like, excuse me, can you tell me where your bathroom is? I'm one of those people that has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like, who does that? Apart from, you know, Her Majesty the Queen of England. And she, I'm guessing that she does sometimes go to the bathroom. You know, on state occasions. <laughs> Is that too much? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, it was too much. All right, thanks very much. Anyway, what else did we learn on the show? Um, well, not a lot. Um, it's not a show where you learn a lot of things. Um, we learned that Starbucks are, unless they take my advice, they're going down. Really. Uh, we learned that the zucchini walnut muffin has to come back. I think everybody feels the way I do, but the zucchini walnut muffin. And uh, other than that, no, I don't think we learned anything. In fact, I think I can safely say we wasted our time. <laughs> so... That's about it, I think. Really. I don't know if I've got anything else to say. Other than, um, I think tonight this show will get a lot of hits on the YouTubes. <laughs> 10, 15, 20. 
All right, go to bed. Good night, everybody.